Hi everyone, it's Friday, February 27th. This is Lee McMahon with your daily video. Thank you very much for watching. Please take a moment to look over the risk disclaimer, which should now be on your screen, and then we'll begin. If you will, uh, take a moment and uh, pause the recording if necessary. And then uh, we'll go to the charts. Okay, uh, so let's start with dollar yen. The uh, yen pair is down about a third of a percent on the day, though they've recovered pretty well off their lows. Um, you can see... We've had this very consistent trend line here. Uh, we've had since the 5th of this month, and then we saw another test on the 16th of this month, another one here on the 20th of the month. We've come close a couple times. And then uh, this morning, this is the uh, like 1 and 5 a.m. candles, um, we sold off and, and broke down below that trend line. And we haven't quite managed to reestablish ourselves back above it yet. Um, we're obviously out of the danger zone. I think the danger zone really is below 102 and then below, again, about these 10170, this 10170 level. Um, but this is one to watch. Uh, the Nikkei, all-important counterpart to the yen, okay, is at resistance as well. You could make some sort of sloppy double top, head and shoulders type argument here. We're kind of retesting that area, and that area as well. So um, I would be keeping an eye on yen pairs tonight. I think if we... Uh, do manage to sustain break back over the trend line, we should squeeze higher and eventually break this 102.70 area and head up towards 104. Um, so just something to keep an eye on. If we do continue to sell off, uh, these are my support levels, 173, and this is a FIB extension level here, down here at about 98.15. All right, um, some of the other majors, the Euro, uh, higher on the day, uh, starting to fade a little bit here. Um, didn't quite make it back up to this 137.40 retest area, but um, pretty strong rally despite mixed European data this afternoon. Um, squeeze higher, falling lower. I don't have a particularly great play here. If we made it up to 137.40, I would have probably tried to short, but we didn't. So we're kind of just stuck in a range now, and I don't have a particularly great interest in trying to deal with the chop that has been the euro lately. Pound dollar. Okay, again, looks like it's trying to make another move higher. It's been trying to do that for quite some time. All right, a little bit of a breakout here. Um, but, you know, it's been kind of a whippy pair. You can see these lots of big candles. One, this combination is two. This is a third. All right, so here's a fourth. So lots of whippiness back and forth. Uh, I do still like this pair to continue to march up towards new highs. Um but it's just been very difficult to pick your spots on that pair for for uh, the past week, two weeks or so. Uh, Aussie, all right, in an interesting position here. Uh, broke down beneath its trend line, managed to rally back above. Um, we'll see if uh, this is going to be a retest in my, you know, it depends on how, kind of how you draw this trend line. If uh, you draw it uh, and you ignore wicks, or you ignore this wick and catch this one, all right, it's a perfect retest. Uh, so it kind of just depends on how you draw that trend line. Uh, we'll see if uh, Aussie Bears manage to pile in to uh, uh, further positions this uh, afternoon and then into the Asian session, drive it lower. Uh, that would probably need some risk off. Uh, Emini is looking pretty decent here, but we'll see if they could manage to make new highs. Uh, still showing some fairly significant RSI divergence, uh, which is worth noting. Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi is trying to break out, all right? Again, kind of depends on how you draw these trend lines, uh, but we're right in that area. I think a decisive close above 83.80 uh, would really uh, sort of invalidate any, I mean, I guess even yeah, a close above 83.90 or so uh, would really certainly mark a breakout no matter how you draw these trend lines. So we'll see uh, if we do manage to put in another high here on Kiwi. Now we do have some Kiwi data later tonight, uh, business confidence, so that is one to sort of keep an eye on as well. The dollar Swiss franc uh, fall back from the strive of just this channel. Um, we still have this support level down here at about 88.50. Uh, resistance remains 89.24. You need to play the range. Um, I still like dollar Swiss to eventually manage to break out. I just don't know when that's going to happen now. Um, again, a lot of whippiness going on. Dollar index, you can see, um, continues to be stuck below this trend line and this 200 period EMA here on the four hour chart. So the dollar index, you're going to need to see clear about 
All right, and we can start to get some aggressive rallying in the dollar, but until that point, uh, it's hard to get aggressively long USD. Speaking of USD, here is dollar Swedish Krona. Um, this has been an interesting pair lately. I talked about how it held a 618% FIB pretty much perfectly. We've rallied since there. Um, I am still expecting this pair to continue to mount uh, an assault on these previous highs up here, about 657, uh, and head up towards about 66 and then 6.7 as my targets. Um, we'll see. All right, we'll see if that FIB holds. We'll see what the dollar does, but that is one. Uh, I still like nothing has really changed on that. Uh, quick look at gold. Um, I still continue to like gold to the upside. Um, I think we're eventually heading, trying to head towards 1,400, uh, which probably does not bode well for the dollar, um, but we kind of have to see exactly how that plays. Certainly, though, if we do see gold start to break down, expect some dollar strength. Uh, the first level to watch would be about this 1320 figure. If we get below there, uh, we could very quickly see a move down towards about 1300 or 1305. So keep your eye on gold. Some of the crosses, um, Euro Aussie is still kind of looking for a breakout here. All right. Um, actually, on a four hour uh, chart, this has been a very consistent trend line. Uh, you can see we wicked over it twice, but we didn't manage to close over it. So looking for basically a four-hour close above 153.30 or so uh, for a possible move higher. You can see these moving averages, 5,100, 200, all stacked at about 152.50, providing a pretty decent support level. So if we do see that manage to break out, I would be keeping an eye on um, Euro Aussie for potential longs. Uh, Euro Pound has been kind of a uh, little bit of a mess lately. Um kind of just trading still within this wedge still looking for a move up towards 83 um, but if we do get that pound breakout that I'm looking for that may not happen we could visit 81.50 first and I would probably give it a shot long at 81.50 um, if we do end up down there uh, let's see if there's any other good yen pair setups I haven't really checked through them much today doesn't really look like it yeah, lots of just chop. The good one was, uh, unfortunately, Cad Yen back here. This was a perfect opportunity to get short, but that uh, was back at 93.70 or so. It's about 200 pips ago, um, but I sort of missed that one. Um, what else? Oh, today's chart of the day is Aussie Cad. Um, nice, very consistent wedge going on here, so that's one that just put on your radar. You can either try to trade it on a breakdown or fade it against these highs or buy a breakout above parity. Um, those are kind of your three options, I think, no matter which one you choose. I think there's a good potential for a solid risk-reward trade there. All right, so I hope that's helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Good luck trading the rest of the week. Uh, we do have some U.S. and Canadian data out tomorrow, um, some GDP figures for both, so uh, keep your eye on those. All right, thanks. Have a great day.